In this class, we're going to learn how to decorate uh, one of the Prima bird cages. And um, they come with a bird in it. This happens to be one that was defective and came without a bird. So I'm going to go ahead and use that as my personal one um, because the bird is just a matter of where you want to place it anyway. Um, it's beautiful. The bird is perfect in it. But I want to use up a defective product, and so um, I'm going to go ahead without it. All right, so we are going to use some paper from Gone Artsy, and in your kits, you were given uh, several sheets of paper, and you can choose from whichever ones you want for your background. I am choosing this nighttime sky one. I also printed out some uh, fairies, and I put them on, I ran them through my Xyron. Now, you don't have to do this. You can uh, choose ones from other from the paper that you've got or from other papers or you can print out a completely different thing or you don't have to print anything at all. It's completely up to you. Uh, I'm going to use tape, score tape, glue, my clearly for, uh, clearly for Art film sheets, some moss, and then I'll also add some flowers, but I ran out of room on the, the table here, so we'll add those last. All right, so the first thing I want to do is take my paper, and on the back of your birdcage, there are little tabs, and you just want to bend those up. They're very easy to bend up. You don't want to do this too many times, though, because they will eventually snap the metal. But the nice part about it is you can periodically change it out if you wanted to, just, you know, a few times before the metal breaks. All right, once you do that, oops, I missed one. Once you do that, then you, this comes right out, okay? And so now you've got the birdcage and you've got your uh, your backing, okay? So you can choose whichever side you want for the outside. I'm going to leave mine with the nice uh, distressing that they have on it for the outside of it, just because that way if, it, if the back happens to show it all, that will give it some nice texture. So I'm going to use this side on the paper. Okay, now I need to figure out about where I want it on the page. And I think I want mine to be up here. I don't want this little cow and moon in it because I don't want it too, too um, nursery rhyme-ish, but I like the stars and the, the other background. So I'm gonna go ahead and put mine up here and I'm just gonna trace around it. So is that about where I want it? About right like that, I think. Yeah. Okay, so about right there. And I'm just going to trace around. Okay, so now I've got it like that, and I can just set it on here. And if you look, I, I when I did it, I wasn't super careful, so it'll be outside the lines a little bit, but that's, if you see here, but that's okay, we can just trim that back off. So now I'm gonna take my tape, and this side's really pretty too, if you wanted to, you know, just polka dots. And just, like I said, whatever paper you've got, I want this because it'll go, it'll go well with my fairy theme that I'm gonna do. And I'm going to put my tape right on the metal. Something along those lines is fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. And just, uh, you know, use your bone folder, or your fingers or whatever, and burnish your tape down. I'm going to place this on here. Just like that. Again, burnish it down. And I'm going to turn it over and I'm just going to trim off the excess. There's my background. Now, I will tell you that you can also paint these, um, you know, use alcohol inks, acrylic paints, things like that. If you want just like a, a you know, splotchy or textured background. I just happened to want to do a scene and so I chose to do mine with paper, but it's totally up to you 
how you decorate your back your background. All right, next I'm going to just distress my edges a little bit. Um, the actual, you, you know, it wouldn't work to distress it like uh, rough it up very well um, unless you did that ahead of time, which I didn't, and I'm okay with that because once it attaches to the metal, that's really not going to show much anyway. So, but I do want to distress it with color just so that in case it's the light hits it, we don't uh, have that white edge. So I'm going to use this iced spruce because it kind of blends with my paper. And you just distress it like you would anything else. Just go along the edge, thick or thin as you want. See, I did not do across the bottom, and the reason why is because once that's inside, I'm going to put moss down in there. That's never going to show. So um, I'm going to stop right there. I've done around the curved edge. All right, let's just take a sneak peek at what that's going to look like. And get that back inside there. And I'm not going to clamp it down, but there you can see there's my nice starry background for the beginning of my scene. All right, now I'm going to take a piece of my Clearly for Art, and you can use whatever color um, you want on this. It comes in clear, black, or white. And again, this is optional. You do not have to do this part. You can just decorate it with flowers and lace if you choose. Um, I'm going to do a little scene in mine. So I took out a sheet, and I'm going to, it doesn't matter which way it goes. Boy. Dusty. This stuff picks up your little strands of lace and things like that that you have. So make sure your desk is fairly clean. Okay, so I've got that and I'm going to take my images. Now I'm going to be layering mine because I want a 3D effect. Again, you do not have to do that. You can build a flower um, out of this if you want. You can, you know, there's numerous ways to do it. I'm just showing you what my desire is. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is start with my background, and I'm going to be cutting part of this away, but I want to lay this on here, and I've just laid it right on there. I'm burnishing it down really well, and like I said when I've worked with this before, only certain glues will work for this, but I found that the Xyron works beautifully, and so that's my preferred method. Okay, now I'm going to take this because I don't want to use all, you know, I don't want to just lay this on and then cut it out. And I want to use all of my, my resources. So I'm just going to do a rough cut around part of what I want to use. And the first thing I need to do is the lady because I want her to stand out a little bit. So there's another piece. And now I'm going to do the wings, and because I'm going to have those stand out even more. All right, so those are the pieces that I'm going to need, two wings and her. Um, and now I'm just going to peel these off and stick them on as well. Now, I'm going to lift this up. So you can see that the image I found, only one of the wings is completed. The other one was cut off in the way it was drawn. So I'm using the same wing twice to be able to build this out. Okay. All right. So now what I want to do is I'm going to cut this first into... Now, I have not tried this on my scanning cut, and I should, because that would sure make this simple and easy if you could do it on there. And I'm not sure, this is really thick film, so I'm not sure how that would do. So that's an idea for another day. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out my wings. And actually, let me cut that into two pieces as well. So I'm just fussy cutting around. You could do this with an X-Acto knife, your uh, gyro cut, whatever you have. This is just what I had handy. 
and I'm all about what's easiest when it comes to crafting. So if it's within reach, it's going to probably get used. Now I'm going to cut up what would be the natural back for her rather than cut into where the wings would have been. And that will just give me a place to attach these wings and give it a little more stability. Right here, the gyro cut really would have worked a lot better, but like I said, it's outside and I didn't go get it, so that's the great thing about the gyro cut or even a, you know, just a um, utility knife is you can get into corners better. Okay, so I've got my lady cut out. And I actually think I will go get my gyro cutter and do this last part, so um, I'll be back after I get it cut out. All right, all my pieces are cut, and um, if you are a perfectionist, this may cause you some dismay. Uh, I, I found it very challenging to get, even with the gyro cut, to get a nice clean edge um, going through the uh, Cooley for Art because it's so thick. So yeah, I think it's a great idea if I try out the Scan and cut, which I'll do another time, and if you have one, um, you might be interested in that. So we'll see how that goes with later on with time. But for right now, I've got my images cut. They look pretty nice, but I want to go ahead and distress the edges on these as well. So I'm going to use that same, but I'm going to use just a really light touch. I don't want much. So just enough to kind of cover those, those edges and blend it in with my background. And like I said, all we're trying to do is get rid of those white rough edges so they don't show and they will blend right in with the background. Now this stuff does bend so you can push it out of the way and the great thing about it is it blends back or bends back I mean. So that one is done and I'm going to do up these others. All right, now that I have that all done, I'm going to take my heat gun and start shaping these. So I'm going to take a wine cork, just because I happen to have it uh, laying around, and it's about the right size and shape. You don't want anything too big, um, but use whatever is handy. You could use a, you know, a pill bottle or uh, a cup or whatever you need to use to for the size of your image. So what I want to do is bend this swing part a little bit. So I'm going to hold that. Now this is going to get hot, and if you have sensitive fingers, I recommend that you, um, you know, find a way to do it with tweezers or something like that. Okay, and while it's hot, I'm going to go ahead and just roll this across, and I'm trying to give it that dimension so that when it stands up, it'll have, you know, some 3D effect to it. So I'm going to heat this up again. I'm going to lay it on here and heat it up again because I want to do the heads as well. 
It doesn't take a lot of heat, and you don't have to be too close. Okay, and once you see it start start curling a little bit, then you can do that. And I'm just going to hold these against. They're small enough I can hold them against the cork so that they get a nice rounded effect to it. Okay, so now I've got that. All right, and now I want to bend her dress and her back out a little bit. So I'm going to heat just that area. Okay, now this is going to be layered on top of here with some pop dots. So I'm going to do the same thing to her dress on this side. Just a slight bend. As you can see, there's not much. But you can shape this, you know, yours according to however your image is and what you want. Okay, now I'm going to do the same with the butterfly wings. I've got one that I want out and one that I want more back. So I'm going to shape the first one. And you can see it's just slightly, slightly curved. Not much. Okay. And this one I want more out the other way, so I'm going to turn it over and heat the reverse side. So now when I put them together, they'll have that three-dimensional look. Okay? Now remember, this stuff can be remelted, so if you find it's too much or anything like that, don't worry about it. You can always go back and fix it. All right, so I'm going to need to uh, pop dot this up. Okay, so I have a bag of pop dots here. I think those are the ones I'm going to want. And I'm going to put it on the main image. they're on there good and secure and you could do double layer if you wanted an even more dimension um, you know like another whole layer of a woman or you could just pop them up twice on the you know to put two layers of pop dots to live to you however dimension however much dimension you want now I'm gonna take my woman and get her lined up and put her on here. There we go. So now I've just got some dimension like that. All right. So the first wing, the rear wing, I'm going to actually put in between the two pieces. So I'm going to use just a tad of hot glue and stick that right in between the two pieces like that. Now I'm going to take the top wing and put it right on top and again just using a little tiny dot of hot glue you can see it's just a tiny tiny dot and put that right in place there. Okay and now I've got her wings and it's got lots of dimension to it. Now on this part, I think I've bent it just a tad too much, so I'm going to reheat it and rebend it a little bit. Heated it and just kind of pulled it as it was heating, and that should be enough. And that's I like that much better. All right, now we're going to use our foam, or I mean our our moss, and we're going to put our moss across the bottom. And I'm going to just do that with hot glue. So I'm going to go from the back side and just add some glue, a little at a time. Just take some moss and stick it down. Some more glue. And 
some more moss. And I want it to hang out the front a little bit like this. And you can add more if you need to do that to get that effect. It's totally however you want to, uh, your moss to look. So that's how our moss looks in the bottom. Really quick, easy, simple. Okay, so I've uh, cleaned up a little bit and switched out mats, and now we're going to work on decorating a little bit. Uh, this, is, you know, this isn't going to take a lot to make this project anyway. So, in your kit, you got this set of really big flowers, and that is um, what I'm using as my focal point. You can use smaller, you can use whatever you want. But I've uh, spread them out a little bit and I'm going to attach them to the top here. Now the other thing that I have, and I just picked this up at Michael's. Um, it's not in your kit, but um, it was $1.50 I believe. And it's just a big tassel. And I'm going to put that behind my flowers so that it hangs down. And so I'm going to attach it to the back of my flowers. I'm just looping the, um, this particular set has some wires on it. For attaching, I'm just looping it through there. I'm going to let it hang down the back and twisting my wires around it. Sorry, it's getting tangled up now. Okay, and now I'm going to just kind of loop it around a couple of times so that it stays in place. You could knot it or do whatever you need to do. And actually, I think I might do that. So I'm just taking the loop and making a knot out of it. Okay, and I'm going to secure that knot just with a dot of glue. Okay, and let that dry for a second. All right, and now I'm gonna bring this up and I'm gonna to have to tip this up so I can see where I want it to lay. I definitely want it off to the side a bit. So I'm gonna put it like that. And I'm going to have to adjust my tassel just a tiny bit to make it lay nice. And I'm gonna cut off this extra string because it's showing through on the front too much, which is why I had the glue on there, just in case. And now that I know that, I'm going to secure it even further so that it won't come undone. Okay, and now I'm going to pick this up and I want it off to the side just slightly, so about right there. And I've got to get it so that the tassel will hang nicely. So now um, I'll show it to you from the side afterwards. And now I can take these wires that are in the back and just wrap it around one in, one in the front, one in the back, and just secure it. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and wrap the remainder of the wire around this back part now that I've got it where I want it. So I'm just going up here, whoops, in between, and I'm just winding it. And that's just going to give it a good secure place. And I won't have to glue it because that will secure it enough with the wire that um, should be pretty sturdy. Okay, so now this is what I've got. Okay, and I know it's going to be hard to see, and I'm not I'm not loving it, so I'm going to slide it up a bit and try and get that in between those two cage pieces, and so that's better. I I, I like that a little bit better. Okay, now you could use a um, smaller uh, tassel, what you know, whatever you want, and I'm going to try and bend these just a slight bit and get that stuck in there so that it hangs nicely. Okay. 
Now I'm taking my tassel and I'm just kind of pushing it in between the two pieces and that's going to make it hang nicer. Okay, so it's in between there. And now you can see that hangs much, much nicer. All right, I'm going to go in from the back. All right, so now I've got that secured in there and I'm going to take my glue just so that I make sure it stays in place and doesn't knock around and just put a little dot of glue right along the edge of both of the wires. And like I said, I don't want it to show through the front, so I'm just putting a little bit, just enough to secure that. Now I shoved it in there pretty good, so it, it should be fine, but just to make sure. All right. Now I'm gonna take it over, take, turn it over, and I'm going to adjust these flowers. And I'm just moving them around and getting them where I want them. Okay, and then you've got other flowers too that you can add in if you want extra color. Um, I'm probably going to use a couple of purple ones just to bring in some of the purple from her, um, her wings and to give it a little bit of variety in color as well. Okay, and I'm just randomly putting them in. And I can go in between with the wire and just wrap it. And that way I don't have to use a whole bunch of glue and I can take it out later if I don't, if I change it or, you know, want to change colors or change my mind on the design or whatever. Okay, so there's one in place. I'll take another one. Now remember, when you're designing, you want to try and stick with odd numbers, so I'm just going to put two of the purples in there, which will give me five flowers total. What we have now, and I'll probably play with that a little bit more um, off screen and make sure that it, it shows nicely, but for right now, you get the idea. So you'll see in the final pictures. All right, so that's that part, and now I want to start working on this on the inside. So I have to figure out about where I want my fairy to stand. And I think that I want her to stand with the kind of against this edge like this. All right. So I'm going to secure that corner of that, um, I guess you'd call it the blanket right here. I'm going to secure that with a little glue right on the edge. So I just put a line of glue along the edge of the blanket and I want that blanket to be right on that edge, right there. Okay, now it's not very secure right now because it's just, um, just a little bit of the glue. So I'm gonna go in from the back side now and add glue right along that line while I hold it in place. And that's gonna just give it that extra security. That was dry and now I'm going to swing her inside and I want her standing up on the moss. There we go, just like that. Okay, and I'm going to stand it up so I can get it exactly where so it's staying even. All right. And I'm going to go in from the back and glue her feet in. Now we have the fairy inside there. And you can see, looks like that. And she's, you know, got her, her babies that she's swinging and it will have that nice starry background once we get the backing back on. Okay, so I wanna add some flowers along the bottom and I'm just going to stick them in and see what I think. And I rather like that one right there. And this is hard to, I know it's hard to see. So that's gonna go like right there. And like I said, I'm just playing with my flowers. You can use whichever ones you want, bend them around, stretch them out. Okay, 
but I need to add these same purple ones in again, so I'm going to cut off the stems a little bit so I can poke them in. And don't throw away your stems. Keep them. They work great for glue. And I'm going to add those. the look of that. So now I'm going to go ahead and secure these down and I'm just going to come in from the back with the glue. And this big one has a big pad on the bottom um, so I can just stick the glue to the pad and then let it dry for a second. And the purple one, I'm just going to put it on the stem and then stick it in underneath where I want it. got this kind of uh, soft pink whitish one and I'm going to do the same thing but I think that stem is too long so cut that off all right so I'm going to let that dry for a second and then I'll come back once I can tip it over and show you where we're at okay so I decided I wanted to blend in that um, blanket curtainy look I'm on the side that. here so I took a piece of the organza that uh, came from that dress that you've seen me working with and I want to pleat it like a curtain kind of. So I'm just going to mountain and valley it back and forth. No particular order, anything like that. Just making some pleats. And this is sliding, so it's kind of hard to deal with. I'm going to put my glass on one end. And now I'm going to take my, my, glue, or my heat gun, and from a distance, I'm going to heat it up and try and get some of those pleats to stay in place. If you get too close with your heat gun, you're going to melt the organza. So make sure you keep a little bit of distance. Okay, I've got that warmed up. I'm going to press it down. Do it again. Okay, now I'm not looking for perfect pleats, but I want to get some of that pleating in there. And the only way to do that is to heat it up and with an iron, it would just melt it because it's, you know, that fine fabric. So now I've got one end and I can take this other end, adjust it slightly and heat it up so that it will stay. Okay, and there I've got somewhat of a pleat in my organza. All right, now along the bottom here, I'm going to take my lighter again and melt just so that we don't get those frays. That's good. All right, so now I've got a bit of a pleated curtain-like look. And I'm going to take my back, put it up inside here, and see how I want this to go. And I think, yep. Okay, so I'm just going to attach it at the top. And I'm going to actually have it go over the back like that. So I'm going to turn it over and secure that in place with some hot glue. Okay, and now I'm going to take my background and put it inside. And make sure that my curtain stays inside because I'm going to move it around from the front. Put that inside and I'm going to secure this down. So just push my little tabs. Okay, so now the curtain is behind and I think I'm going to actually leave it behind there like that. So, 
hopefully you can see this. So instead of bringing it out to the front, I'm just leaving it um, attached there. But I'm going to just slightly pull the baby's thing back off and reattach it in a second. Just being careful so I don't rip the, the paper on it. And I'm, that way I can lift this curtain up, pull it out a little bit. There we go. And now I can just put a couple of drops of glue here and there to secure that back in. And that, I'm going to call that pretty well done, except I want to put, um, I think I'm going to put a few flowers randomly along the bottom here, or maybe some lace, I'm not sure yet. So I'm going to play around a little bit with um, just the final decoration. I may put some organza, you know, along the bottom, like that. I'm not sure, but I will play around and um, show you the final picture, so stay tuned. I decided to come back and show you real quickly. Um, I chose to get some of this five uh, strand flatback pearl and I'm going to put that along the bottom and I decided that that was, would blend in, would make this, this tassel blend in a little bit. So I'm going to attach that and then you will see the still pictures at the end. Thanks for joining me. for you.